in this new episode of Mailbag, we'll have a bunch of cool new stuff, so you could know what to buy for your own workshop or your projects. And by the way, from now on, the parts that I buy myself will be tagged with this icon. The parts I get as a gift from you or other companies are marked as this. The sponsored parts are marked with this icon and the homemade or the second hand parts are marked with this icon. I really hope you like the components I will be showing you today and maybe give you some ideas for your own projects because that's the main goal of this video series. We will see cool parts for future projects, products for my workshop and tools to help me with the future projects. So let's get started. Hey guys, PCBWay is sponsoring this video and let me just tell about their services. For example, look how awesome their prototyping PCBs are. And you can get this for only $5. They are so professional and they will make your project work a lot better. And to order such PCBs, you only need a few minutes on their website, where you can select any configuration that you want for your boards. Along with that, you can also order the SMD stencil for soldering the components using solder paste. And you can also use their services for flexible PCBs and create some unique projects. And if you want to make your project start to finish, you can get the PCBs assembled together with the mold injected part or maybe 3D printed, metal parts or other CNC services, all with PCB way. What's up my friends, welcome back. I want to start this episode with the second hand drill tower. This is for a future awesome project because I want to make my own low cost but good quality milling machine. Because you see, the most basic milling machine will cost you like $1000. I want to make one with a fraction of that cost. So I found this drilling table for only $70 on a second hand app store. I also bought a routing machine, which I don't have right now with me because I took it to my new home to use it. But I've already shown you some video with it on my previous blog post when I was going to my new home. And the routing machine is needed in order to have a decent rotary movement because a normal drill would not be a good tool for a milling machine. Because you see, milling machines experience side forces a lot, not just down forces as a normal drill. Also the rotation of a routing machine is a lot more precise. I want to use this drill table together with some other parts that I've ordered, such as lead screws, linear slides and so on. The tower has decent stability. Is made out of metal and the X and Y axis are moving quite well. After some cleaning and adding some WD-40, I can say that the rails are precise and I can see no backlash, which is great. The only thing that looks fragile is the drill support, which for sure I will have to change. I want to make this milling machine with less than $300. Now for the same project I've also bought this meter here. This is a necessary tool for all the makers' workshops. This is a very precise caliper with a precision of 0.001mm. It comes with a magnetic arm and I want to use this to make my milling machine rails as straight as possible. You can also use it later for milling or with any lat machine. It only costs around 20 bucks or close to 30 bucks if you also order the magnetic support. What's interesting about this support is that with only one knob, all the joints are getting fixed in place. As you can see right now, all the joints are moving. But when I tighten the knob, everything is fixed in place. Pretty cool. Now the next item for the mailbag is a new 3D printer. Pretty much all the big makers that I watch on YouTube nowadays have a Bamboo Lab printer, so I had to try it myself as well. This is the Bamboo Lab A1 with the AMS system meaning it has this holder on the side with four colors at the same time and being able to print with all the colors for the same print. The first thing I've noticed with this printer is the build quality. For the same price range compared with other printers, this one has such a unique build. And I'm not talking about the shape, but the mold injected body frame, the low weight materials and good engineering. I think this is the lightest printer I ever had. You can lift it with only one hand. It's crazy how light it is. The assembly was also easy. Just join two parts together and add some screws. 
Another thing that I like about this printer is the price. Because you see the printer alone comes for 344 euros and together with the multicolor system for 500 euros. Which for the quality of this machine, its build volume, the speed and all the specs, it is a pretty competitive price. This printer has fully autonomous leveling and by the way, is quite precise and you don't have to do anything manually. It has multicolor print ability which is great and gives you such a great result, active flow compensation, easy nozzle change with only one click and also guess what, also active noise cancellation. It literally tests the motor vibration when you start it up and then calibrates it for low noise. The build volume is of 256mm all around and it could print with speeds up to 500mm per second. It also has a built-in camera for video recording or time lapses and works great. And probably the great feature is the Bamboo Lab Studio. Since the printer has Wi-Fi, you can directly control everything from here. You can simply leave the printer in your garage and print from anywhere else. Which is for sure what I will do once I move to my new workshop. And because it has 4 colors always connected and also a very good self-cleaning system, you can reliably print without constantly going to the actual printer. While printing with different colors, it does a lot of filament purge, which is kind of wasteful, but is the price to pay for multicolor printing layers. The touchscreen will turn off for power and screen saving, the video can be stored on the SD card, very low volume, a very rigid frame and high speeds and very easy to use, print with just one click. One more interesting part was that the machine knows what filament you put on the spool automatically. I don't know if it has a color sensor or maybe an NFC sensor because once I change the filament it automatically detects it. Now it must be a bamboo lab filament because obviously it can't work with a generic color. So as a conclusion I might say that for this price range is the best quality printer I ever had. I haven't used it that much but it seems very reliable. We will see that in time. The next part I want to show you is this thermal camera slash multimeter. And yeah, you heard it right. This is a thermal camera together with a multimeter. You power it up and you go into infrared camera mode and you get all the important readings on the screen. You can also take snapshots and pass them to your PC via USB. On the back you also have a lens for macro. So now you can get close to small PCBs and circuits and analyze the temperature. Then if you press this button you can enter the multimeter screen. You can measure AC and DC voltage, resistance, capacitance, continuity, diode mode, frequency and temperature and even NCV which basically is detecting voltage without touching the wires. Use the side button to change through modes. It also creates a graph which you could also store as a picture for future use. That is quite nice when making experiments. It is a CAT2 up to 600 volts, you can easily access the fuse to change it and it also has a flashlight on the back which might be useful. And the screen is quite big. And that might drain the battery quite fast and I'm guessing that that's why they are using a back background, to reduce the battery usage. And it also has an automatic power off. Links for this device and everything in this video are below in the description as always. Ok guys, now let's see the next part. I want to build my own IoT mailbox. I'll be soon moving to my new house and I constantly receive packages for my new projects. An automatic mailbox with a one time use code that you could tell to the delivery guy is the best solution for my problem but such a mailbox will cost you like $300 or more. And it's just a metal box with an IoT system. I can make the metal box myself and the IoT system should cost less than 20 bucks. That's why I've ordered some new keypads, a new ESP32 for Wi-Fi and this security door lock. I wanted these green keypads because they have the enter button as well. And the lock is using two coils actuators to open and close the lock. And for the one time password I'm planning to use my website as we have seen on my IoT course. It should be a cool project and maybe like 10 times less expensive than the commercial version. The next component on the list is very simple. I bought two metal discs and some electromagnets. For a while I'm tired of the normal tripod for my camera. 
I want an extensible arm from the ceiling. Usually I record using a normal tripod like this one, but since I move around the table a lot, it gets quite annoying, especially when I want to record on top of the table because it's very uncomfortable to take the entire tripod and get on top of the table. That's why I want an arm like this one, an extensible arm, that will come from my ceiling. This is very small, I want to make one custom made. The problem with this one is that it can't handle the weight of the camera unless you tight these nuts a lot. So tightening each of the joint is very time consuming. So that's what I want is to make an arm like this one that will have a button right, right next to the camera. I press the button and with this brake system all the joints will get loose. I can move the camera wherever I want, release the button and it will stay in that position. That's what I want to do and that's why I bought this metal disc, some other smaller disc, some electromagnets because I want to try to make some sort of clutch because it will have a shaft in the middle and then be able to move like a joint and also have a braking system. And that's why I need this metal disc and the electromagnets. I want to test on how to make an electronic clutch system where with a push button the disc is released, you can move the camera arm and then fix it in place. I want to test if it's better to have one big electromagnet or a few of these small electromagnets working on 24 volts. Next I wanted to show you a new microcontroller. I'm making a small robot that should be very easy to assemble and I needed a small ESP32. Now the smallest one I think is this one, but this is very difficult to solder for one who has no experience and also it needs a regulator, the reset pull-ups, the buttons and so on. A better solution was this one. I think this is the smallest ESP32 dev board with sufficient pins. And I say sufficient pins because there are some smaller boards but with only 5 or 6 pins and I need as many as possible. This one has 28 pins, the Wi-Fi antenna, a voltage regulator, a USB Type-C connector and the reset buttons. Just as the big Vuram ESP32 dev board, but a lot more compact. And by the way I've also found a compact version of the Arduino Nano right here. It's a lot smaller and easy to solder and also has everything that you need, so check the links below if you also want one. And the last product that I've ordered is this nylon type resin for 3D printing. If you remember I've put aside the 3D printed helicopter project, because the parts were a bit too fragile. And now I want to use this nylon type resin and compare the force of resistance. It should be a lot better than normal ABS. So I've made the same parts and they really look a lot more resistive to strong impacts. I haven't made the test under real helicopter stress, but they promise a lot. As you can see I'm pushing here as hard as I can with my finger, but the part is elastic and hard enough and it doesn't break. Even the touch feels like nylon plastic. Once I make the test I will release another update video on the helicopter projects. So guys this was the episode of Mailbag for today. Remember that you have all the links in the video description and if you want to send me something to show in my videos, use the email and the mailbag subject below. I hope you have a better idea of some new products or components on the market. Till the next one, thanks again and keep up you guys. So guys, here I am in my workshop, another video that ended, I hope that you like it and the most important part, I hope that you have learned something new. Anyway, I just wanted to give a thank you to all my patrons. To you guys, to the viewers who are supporting me, liking my content, uh, sharing it, commenting below. Uh, just check my website, check my shop, check my t-shirts. All this kind of stuff will support my channel. So thank you very much once again.